episode 22 of the Castle Keeper's Guide. This is for Troll Lord Games. It is a series of 12 maps. We've got the civilized little locations of your Thorpe, your Hamlet, your village, all the way through to Metropolis. We've got our military locations where we have our Tower, Martin Bailey, 45 military camp, castle, and greater castle. A total of 12, and we're drawing them, and we're going to color them all on one canvas. Why one canvas? Because I think it would look freaking sweet to see them all lined up together. And I think there's a potential poster in here, you know what I'm saying? This will be something special. So today, episode 22, we are moving on from that delightful little cutaway tower known as the Block. Perhaps one of my best works today, I really love it, to the town. We're doing a little bit different on the town here. So we're gonna come back to this once I've thanked you, my Twitch subscribers and my Patreon backers. It is only because of you that this channel exists. Your encouragement, your participation, your ideas, honestly, just keep fueling the fire. So thank you. There's a lot more to come just for you. So let's get jumping into this. I normally um, warm up so to speak so we're definitely going to warm up here as well and i think i think one of the first things i actually want to do on this town is i want to draw some of our forests in redraw our road start redrawing our hills because i don't draw hills like that redraw our river and that will give us a good basis, I think. All of those little squiggly lines are where we're going to put farms and things like that. So, and also, you may have noticed, because I drew this originally in on paper, that we have a little bit of a coloured background here. But not here. So we're going to get rid of this coloured background too. Just a little bit at a time as we go. So that's where we're going to start this. All right. Hey, GL, good to see you. I saw your message on the Discord channel too, by the way, about that being your final map. Looking pretty damn good, my friend. Looking pretty damn good. Good job on that. change that a little bit and we're gonna change that a little bit Okay. What the, what the hell? Really? So we're on the town. Yeah. Am I selecting the wrong thing? Select color range. What's that one do? Give it a lot more fuzziness, perhaps? Pixel selected. 
pretty sure that there's a color range in there, Photoshop. Pretty sure. Hey, Magnificent Pex is here. And Princess Strigo, you have indeed arrived. I'm going to be a little bit slower gearing up tonight, everyone, just so you know. It's been, it's been a week. You know, it's been a long week, don't you think? Like, it, it doesn't feel like Wednesday. It, it feels like it should be a Friday or something. There we go. That's better. That's better. That's much more better. There we go. I think that's cleaned that up nicely. Let's just zoom in a little bit. This is the magic eraser. So I'm just erasing the paper from behind here. I was working out okay. doing tonight anyway give me give me the highlights of your week so far there we go there we go magic eraser it works nicely all right let's change this to what are we gonna draw in with this we're gonna have to experiment a little bit we're gonna try 10 wall with my earth ship but got inspiration this afternoon nice one nice one okay so what's what's going on here we've got all of these squiggly lines i think that was this here so let's get rid of layer one we don't need that let's turn our town back on and let's start drawing let's start drawing we will do just very temporarily oops let's turn our town down a smidge let's go back this is going to become my new town that's not a bad pen weight is it yeah that's pretty good okay we're going to go with that magnificent packs hired a new staffer anything you can add to that This is, this is where you'd say, uh, yeah, for me and you, Alyssa, um, I, I, I hired this person. I'm going to go, what? what You're talking about fuck God. Right, and the reason why I'm doing that is we're cleaning up some of the lines on this thing. So it's going to be way more like this. Like nice and clean. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? All right. Who's Jerry? Who is Jerry? I suppose there is my first failing. So I, I guess you could say, no, I didn't see anything. Uh, 
That's a cat, by the way, in the background. For some reason, he loves to get real loud about this time of day. I think he knows Mama's streaming. He's going, hi, everyone. It's me. All right, where are we going to take that road? That road kind of just ends. I think we'll do something with that road later on. That, that sort of strikes me a little bit like um, something that goes into the farms and things like that, you know, from here. It's funny, I'm retracing literally over an old map that I've drawn 30 years ago. And if you, if you told the younger version of me that I would be sitting there decades later redrawing over this map on a, a computer with a pen where you can write on the screen while talking to people all over the world and recording a video that was going to get distributed out across social media channels I would have got hey well there's a social media channel but it, like I just never would have believed it and yet here we are right, we won't get too caught up in the forest regions but I can't help myself it's going to be part of what we're doing tonight Oh, right, okay, yeah, Jerry the crowdfunding guy, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, 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 okay, I've met him. redraw this entire city but I am going to redraw sections of it particularly buildings like this th these large buildings they're, they're showpiece buildings right there and they need a little bit of love alright let's um let's, let's do some hills let's do some hills I don't like to do too many hills while streaming because I feel like it can be a little bit repetitive. But at the same time, it's kind of, it's kind of nice to see what my technique is. I got this style, by the way, from an old Boston map. And it showed like the area of Boston and the shape of Boston, including the harbor. And they did the hills like this, but nicer. Like there was something about the the tools that they used back then. It was just got such good results. But it was inspirational for me. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get better and better at doing something like this. And I think it works. I think it works pretty good. Is the block going up top? Oh, uh, on this map? You know what? Give me your ideas. What do you think? Where do you think the block should be? 
I like the idea of actually including the block on here. Where? Where should we put the block? I think this would be a point when a place would have a block, right? That as it sort of morphs into a town. Maybe this got something to defend. Hasn't got its walls yet, right? It doesn't want to spend money on the walls. So a tower would be one of the first things. I think we may... I will save it. I will save it. I haven't got very far, but okay, I'll save it. Hold on. Right, save. Um, where does the block go? That seems like a... A follow-up to what does the fox say? Where does the block go? Um, yeah, well, I mean, do we do we do like the block here? Do we put the block here? Maybe this is a good place, right up at the top of the hill. What do you think? Option two. And, um, I wasn't planning on the block being part of the modern baby, but it could be. I mean, if we were going to do it, you know, it would be really cool place right here because we've got this sense of hills. Like if I deleted these. What if we replaced those? And we threw it like um, a Mott and Bailey here. And the insinuation being like it started as a block, then it became a Mott and Bailey, and then it kind of spilled down. I mean, I think. Mott and Bailey's typically were not on little plateaus like this. But if we did, if we did like this section as like a hill. Going down lower. I think that could count. I think that could count. Optional three, Tiny Island. Okay, so we have, I'm going to number them, okay? We have one east side of town on the plateau, but we'll make it a hill. Two, a hill up in the northeast. Also very valid, particularly because it, it, there's almost an insinuation of like this pass coming here. That could be a good one. Or three up here. Or is there a fourth one? So, in the chat, one, two, or three. What do you think? Strega says three. GL says three. I think three's winning. I think three's winning. That's where we're going to throw it. That's where we're going to throw it. Yep, it looks unanimous at this point. So that's where we'll do it. That's, that's exactly where we'll do it. In which case, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually, I'm going to gonna get rid of this road here. I think what we'll do... Yeah, it, it, it can be off to one edge, right? It, it, it's not the focal point of this. But I think what I want to do is if we did... So if the mot is up here, and it'll be larger than that, then the other it's, it's like it's coming down here like this. So maybe actually this was not a bad location. Maybe this is not a bad location to put an access road. Yeah, like this. <laughs> 
All right, well, that's what we'll do. That is what we will do. I'm still wondering about drawing the Martin Bailey, by the way, in this one. Kind of like, um, would you say, like a bird's eye view? What was it Alex Vixen keeps calling it and I keep forgetting? Did I write it down? I didn't. Did she use the term bird's eye or did she use something else? Side view, completely side view. What, like, what actually, pretty much like I've got it, like this. You know, with the, with the hill and coming down like this. I, I was wondering if we should, like, you know, do more like this on, like, you know, some kind of hill, which is rolling down and kind of show, you know, like the, the steps as they're coming down here with the little houses. I was wondering if it should be more like this. And then, like, you know, the, the whole sort of stockade that kind of comes around it. Then I think, I'm not sure if it's just a dry trench then. That's around that, but... No cutaway. No cutaway, no. An elevated view. An elevated view. Rocket Sage, thank you very, very much for the follow. That is extremely appreciated. Hello to you, Rocket Sage. We are drawing 12 maps for Troll Lord Games. A book that's going to be called The Castle Keeper's Guide. It is a series of different types of settlements. I don't know exactly what's in there, but I think they're at least going to describe these different settlements. Maybe do a little write-up and NPCs in them. And we're drawing them all on one canvas. We've got our Thorpe. There. We've got our Hamlet. There. We've got our village. There. And then we've actually got something called a block. It's a tower. Right there. And all of these are going to get coloured. And they're going to be separate maps for the book. But we're drawing them all together because it's going to be a super sexy poster. Like super sexy. Like I want it on my own wall. So this is what we're doing. And we're doing all of the black and whites first. And then we're going to come through and we're going to colour it. And you'll hear us nattering. Because we decided that instead of drawing completely different maps... We took off Thorpe and we evolved it into the hamlet and then we evolved it again into the village. And so we're talking about the changes that would take place over time. So as we're drawing the town here, people were talking about, well, maybe this tower is here. And maybe this tower is actually the same as what's going to be in the Martin Bailey. And that's what's going to be here. So it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a fun project just to kind of evolve everything. And right now I'm just kind of tracing over the town layout and I'm drawing in all of the details for the hills. Hey, Rocket Sage, thank you so much. That's awesome. We, uh, we share each other's work on the channel. There's actually a lot of artists, cartographers and writers here. We just hang out together, and I'm, I'm always mapping something for someone. But uh, I'd like to, you know, just show off how I do things. Like, this is how I tend to do my hills, my elevations. And then, then we, you know, we'll move on to the next one, but then we'll start colouring, and I'll show how I colour things. The original map you see in the background was ink on paper. I'm currently drawing on a Cintiq 24-inch HD Touch. It's basically a big, huge monitor. It weighs 80 pounds. 
and it lies flat on my desk, but it will also stand upright. And I'm drawing in Photoshop, which is a regular digital pen. Because that way I can do things like this and just take them back. And I can't do that with pen and paper. Allows me to experiment. It actually has made me a better cartographer. Because I could just, let's say, well, I wonder what this would look like. And just do it. Hey, Alex Vixen! We were just talking about you, young lady. I'm apparently skiing down a slope. I don't know what this is. Um, I was like, what did Alex Vixen call the Martin Bailey angle? It was a bird's eye. Then it was like elevated. I remember. How much is this tablet? So, um, I will answer that in a couple of different ways, okay? I bought this tablet quite a few years ago. It's a Cintiq, C-I-N-T-I-Q. It's by Wacom, or Wacom, as some people say. I like to say Wacom, soft array. But it's by Wacom. Uh, it's a 24-inch model. They do a 22-inch model, which is cheaper. And they do a 32-inch model, which I can only imagine is a beast, but it'd be super sexy. This, at the time that it came out, was something like two and a half thousand dollars. But nowadays, I'll put money that they're half that price, like way cheaper. But, here's the but. There is a cheaper alternative now that's like half the price, and it's by a company called Huon, H-U-I-O-N. Back in the day, there wasn't a competitor for Wacom. Huon is now. And if I was to buy a tablet like this again, I would get a Huon. It's, it's basically the same thing, half the price. And I think I've got a friend. We were talking about this like a year ago on chat. And we had this discussion. She went off and got a Huon and she's been really happy with it. This is what we do, Rocket Sage. This is what we do. We hang out, we chat, we give each other help and tips. And then people tell me what to draw. That happens a lot. Hey, you should do it like this. Hey, you should do it like that. Draw, draw, draw a pigsty over there. Draw, draw an apple yard. This is what we do. We actually create a lot of things together here in the channel. And basically just the pen. This cutaway, that came from two people that are in the channel with you right now. They were like, don't just draw a regular tower, draw a block. I was like, what the hell is a block? And they were like, do a cutaway. I was like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've never done a cutaway. And yet here we are. All right, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna keep going with this hill. Atriums, atriums all the time. Atriums and ski ball machines. I'm sure that rocket is now going ski what now what in a map? We've had way too many ski ball machines in my maps. Honey Droplets is now hosting me. Honey Droplets, thank you so much. GL, I'm reading your little PM right now. Um, can I read that PM out, by the way? GL. All right, so GL, hey, Honey Droplets, thank you so much. It's really, really, really appreciated. I'll just zoom out when I'm talking to GL here so you can see what I'm working on. I love drawing maps. Just don't ask me to draw a face, a hand, or an apple because I'm shit at them. So GL said, I would move the Martin Bailey to a smaller panel and move the castle to a larger panel 
Well, okay. But, this is half a page. This is a quarter panel. This is a whole half page. I think that's pretty good. I'm not sure the Martin Bailey needs more than half a page. And then, the regular castle is also half. While the greater castle is going to get a full page. I, I think a Martin Bailey, half a page is about right. Considering the shape of a Martin Bailey. Hands are dumb and hard to draw. As someone that can't draw hands, I will agree to that. Uh, true story about me in art at school, okay? I, I am sat next to this guy called Peter Hambling. This is a long time ago. And Peter Hambling could draw anything, okay? And I'm talking about traditional artwork. We're given an assignment, and Peter Hambling starts to draw an Andy Warhol-style piece with American footballers in it. And he's got robot footballers going. He's got abstract footballers going. He's got <coughs> real footballers that look like a photograph. I'm, and I'm sitting there, and I can't even draw an apple. Seriously. I can't get the shading right. I can't do anything. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? So I actually ended up getting red paint crystals, throwing them down on soggy paper so they go, like a little sort of spider's web. And then spilling ink on the paper like I'm some pretentious New York artist. And that piece, my piece, went up framed in that school for 20 years after I left, I swear. People were talking about it for years afterwards. And it was the most dumb thing ever. Long story short is I can't do traditional artwork. But you asked me to draw squiggly lines on a piece of paper? I'm your gal. Maps I can do. Maps I enjoy doing. But like when, when a commission turns into... So, I want a map, but I want it to look like an illustration from a bird's eye view. I'm like, ah, 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 no, 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 that's not what I do. <laughs> Honey droplets. <laughs> I had to do a self-portrait in college and was told to choose a different direction than art. That's harsh. That is harsh. It's like there's certain things that I could do. It's like I was always flagged as an artist, but I never described myself as an artist, like ever. Um, like we had to, we did an art competition. The regulars in the channel would have heard this one, so I won't bore you too much. But we did an art competition where I come from. And where I come from is a Roman town. And it has a ruined Colosseum in it. More of a small arena, really. Very modest affair. But it has one. And, uh, like, uh, uh, but it's also a very old town. Like, this town is, like, 2,000 years old. So it's got a lot of history. And one of its big staple sort of attractions is the clock, the East Gate clock. It's like this Victorian thing. It's a couple hundred years old. And all of the schoolboys and all of the schoolgirls drew the East Gate clock. They just all did. I did the Roman Colosseum back in the day. I had gladiators in there. I do all stick figures. I do all of the audience, thousands of people in the audience. And that, that was that was me. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to do the traditional avenue. I'm going to do something very, very different. But it, then it's like, you know, since then, it's like, Alyssa, you, you can actually draw. It's like, no, no, I can't. If you want me to draw a stick figure and thousands of them, and then I'm your girl. I'll hook you up. But do not ask me to draw a Roman's face. It is just not going to happen. I learned, um, and I went through many years not really knowing what I bring to the table. I was more frustrated than anything because it'd be like, Alyssa, you, you've got now the piece that's hanging up in the uh, the school here for spilling ink on paper. So um, we want you to design, and this is not an exaggeration, we want you to design 
a 3D sculpture that is going to go in a nearby national park. How do you go from spilling ink on paper to a national park sculpture? It's like, that's not me. That's not what I do. It was ridiculous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is really appreciated. Thank you, Rocket Sage. Stick figures, though. Stick figures in bulk. I was, there was a, oh God, there was a guy. Mm. It's like an old artist in England. But my brain keeps going Larry Elmore. You know how brains do. It's going, not Larry Elmore. And of course it's not bloody Larry Elmore. That's a completely different type of artwork. But anyway, I'll remember it one day. But everyone likened me unto him. Because he would just do these massive detailed scenes of like Victorian London. And it's like, if, if the simpler the scene... Like, um, the, a teacher said, that your, your Roman piece was fantastic. So now I want you to draw a Victorian scene, you know, outside a sweet shop. And I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Unless I'm actually putting 2,000 kids outside this sweet shop, it's not going to have the same effect. And it didn't. The teacher was like, oh, you're, you're not really an artist at all, are you? And I'm like, no, no, that's what I'm telling you. But if I could bury a map in details, if I could draw the nails on a roof... On a piece that's going to be 10 millimeters across? I'll fuck you up. That's what I do. And this is what I do with pieces like this too. We, do, we just do stupid detail. It's all about just stupid detail. Versus the intricacies of an individual piece. Draw a vase? No. Draw 2,000 vases in an ancient Roman tomb? Yes. See, I would be I would be terrible at tattoo designs too. It's like, oh, that's a pretty map. Um, and you know, maybe because we've just got a couple of new people here, I'll show you like some of my finished colored pieces in a moment. But it's like, oh, you draw that that looks lovely. Will you create a tattoo design for me? I'm like, unless this tattoo design looks eerily like the map I just drew, no, you don't want me to do that. You'll you'll have one of those really bad tattoo.com things on your arm forever. But I, I have the maturity now to recognize what I can and can't do and be comfortable with it. And I'll, I'll turn away commissions when they start getting way into traditional illustration. Um, I, I know what I am about and I know what I'm not about. In fact, if you like, let me um, let me actually just real quick. I'm gonna hit save, and then I'm, I'm gonna show you something that we completed recently. Okay, just so you get a sense for what we're about here on this channel. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show you something I did for a company called Noble Dwarf. All right, so this is what my maps lo end up looking like. This is a city map that I did for Noble Dwarf. And we just go nuts on details, okay? We just, we get way in there. This is obviously the colored version. Duh. But you can see we're, we're drawing little crates on the docks, little cranes, little paths in people's yards, the lumber that they've got in the yard, the tents, the tent poles. When we did the palace, they actually gave me the name of a palace in real life to draw. We spent like two hours just drawing that one palace. Accurately getting every roof, every gable correct. Right down to the little um, conservatory on the end there. And this, this, I mean, this took, uh, what was this, about 70, 80 hours, something like that. Which I suppose isn't too bad. But this, this is what we do. This is how our maps turn out. We start off black and white. And, like, I could even show you this in black and white here. 
Look at my layer management here. Absolutely bloody awful. Here we go. Can I turn? There you go. So you can see, there's our black and white land. So you can see, here's my hills. This is what we're doing tonight. And then when we get the colouring in, we get the different shades of green. We get the little shadows and the, the reverse of the, the slopes. Gives it a huge sense of elevation. Little mining area. So this this is what we do. This is this is what I'm best known for is settlement maps like this. <laughs> Alex Fiction, you've been here long enough. You get it. This is what we do. I did um I did the Gaxmore map. For also for Troll Lord Games, it was actually a Gary Gygax original um, scenario, an adventure, and they had this original map, and they wanted like a 2020 reimagining, so we did, we did the same level of detail, it was kind of nuts. If a location in the book said there was a dead body on the steps, we drew the dead body on the steps. If they said there was a dead horse and car out the front, we did a dead horse and car. We drew everything that was in the description on that map, it was beautiful. We, we like kind of going the extra length here. So the black and white maps look pretty good. By the time we finish colouring them, I, I'd like to think that they kind of pop off the page a bit. There are the more monotonous parts and drawing hills is one of them. And GL, uh, my answer to your question before, by the way, did that that makes sense? You know, the fact that the Martin Bailey's on a full half page. I think, I think, also, also in all fairness, you know, this is a commission and they've kind of like dictated the sizes. And while I think there's a level of, um, Fluidity. If I made a recommendation to the alternative, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I want to do a Martin Bailey full page. You know. <laughs> Princess, you had not seen. You had not seen this. Of course, you were away from the chat for a while, weren't you? Yeah. This. This is the final version, girl. This is actually available. On the Noble Dwarf site as a canvas print and it is spectacular because canvas picks up the colors in such a rich way I can't even begin to form the words to describe it and it's a spectacular map I believe it's on their site today and they got it in different sizes you know from like 20 inches across all the way up to like 50 or something bloody ridiculous but yeah I was Really happy with how this turned out. And I think... Didn't we draw a squid somewhere in here? Did we not do the squid? I forget where we actually put the squid now. Or maybe they just wrote it into the book when you made the suggestion. I think that might be it. But yeah, a map I'm very happy with right there. But I, I like to think that all of the maps we've been doing in the last 18 months or so have been, like, getting better and better and better and better. Thank you, Pex. Princess, if you wanted to hit the Noble Dwarves up with a little bit of love, snag that map for yourself, girl. I'm sure they would be extremely happy to see one of, one of those get sold. I'm sure they've been selling, but you know what I mean? Out of the blue. It's their baby. It's their, it's their little creation. 
I'm, if we're going to make this a Martin Bailey, I'm going to make this a little rounder on the top here. It was because of your suggestions that um, I think they made those little Kraken statuette things. They literally wrote that into their book. close on this we're getting close god there have been some maps there have been some maps that have been so hilly like i swear i never want to draw another elevation ever i don't think this one though is going to fall into that camp i think this will be okay because we got a little bit here we got a little bit more here Oh, no, I guess we've got a little bit more here. All right, we've got a little bit to do. Hey, Wargaming Recon, good to see you, my friend. We are just getting in our geographical features for our town. When I draw a settlement, and you'll know this from these here. I know I'm upside down right now. I always draw in the geographical features that are likely to contain our settlement growth in some way. So the river would be one of the first things I would draw. And then I always like to try and get our hills in position. Maybe any major sort of forests and things like that. Because people aren't building a house in a tree. You know, within reason. And if they are building on the side of a hill... The hill is going to be the dominating factor here, and they're perched on the side of it. So I always try and get this type of thing drawn first. So you'll notice that I started with the river. I drew in a couple of roads. And now we're adding the hills. And once the hills are done... I'm probably going to take a look to see if there's any more forestry I want to add. Because that's going to obviously restrict where our farms go. Someone give me a reminder to hit save, so I will hit save. So what else we got here? Let's let's keep going. Oh yeah, the the Weiss and Hickman thing. Yes, I heard about that. There's a lot of speculation about it, but. It's a thing. Why don't you uh, why don't you tell the chat what you know? Oh, that's actually taking shape. This, this, I actually think will be okay. I had to, I had some doubts when I first started to clean up the old map. But I think this will be okay. And if I had doubts, I know that you cool kids did too. But I think this is going to work.
Do you think that it was um, what's he trying to distance itself from a tone of the Dragonlance series? It, it, like, is that a distinct possibility? And I'm, I'm genuinely asking that because I've actually not read the books. I used to play the role-playing games, but that's, that's different. Because the tone of the game is largely what the GM then makes it. And the GM was me. So having actually not read any of the books, I actually don't know what tone they had. That is one theory, though, that I have uh, that I have heard around the interwebs, and um, yes, the uh, the two authors are not best pleased, are they? Suing for cancellation of contract, or I should say, it's more the breach of contract, the the because it's apparently directly in breach of several points of the contract. So they'll be curious to see how that one goes. What's the stuff with the Magic the Gathering? Because I, I heard about that. It was like someone was making a comment about, you know, it's a little bit like your comment, just, it's like, yeah, well, you know, with all of the stuff about the Magic the Gathering, I was like, what stuff? Give me the juices, man. Tell me what's going on here. Well, that's not looking too shabby. That is not looking too shabby. Oops, that, that's not particularly good. Let's get our orientation right. Let's hit save. All right, so our village is basically probably actually a little bit off camera, but right about here. That's where our village was once positioned. So I think what I might do... So our... This is this. And this is further over here so this is probably off camera but we've got some hills right along the edge here i might just put some little hills right along the edge of this this is kind of like <laughs> time check jesus christ for gave me gun. we're going for at least another 40 minutes right here it's we're only 53 minutes into the stream That, that, actually, so, uh, Alex Fiction, you raise a, a good point, as do all of you. It's like, I write, I've done a couple of things, like, that are published, but I write primarily for my own homebrew games. I do a lot of research for my own homebrew games and draw some inspiration from real-life cultures. Now, some real-life cultures by modern Western standards could be a bit shitty. I'm, I'm going to pick on the freaking ancient Romans, okay? I'm going to do, not even the ancient Romans, just the ancient times. Go back 2,000 years ago, look how people lived then, the standards that they had for life, and what they thought of in terms of slavery and the likes. That is a real-world thing. And one could use that as inspiration to bring in to a fantasy culture that has the same way of thinking about things. How much is modern society now going to penalize you because of modern standards that you're writing like that? I personally think that you should be able to draw from history and actual real world cultures and bring these things into your world, so to speak. Not everything has to be sunshine and roses in a fantasy setting, you know? And I don't think it should be.
War game, how do you mean? Do you think that we should stay away from... Like, even sort of talking about or making reference to real-world cultures or people? What do you think? And Princess Trigger, do you think that there shouldn't have been changes to the Ravenloft setting? Are the Islands of Terror not um, something that you agree with? I actually don't know much about the Islands of Terror. Oh, that's taking shape, that is. This isn't going to take long. This is not going to take long. I'm going to add a little bit of forestry around here, I think. It's going to be kind of like this sort of area. Well, I'm kind of drawing that in the wrong place, but... I'm going to draw it in this sort of area here. Uh, light forestry. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to cut the damn forest down. Maybe up here too a little bit. But we're going to cut the forest down. When this town grows, the trees are going to get pushed back away from it. The Wargaming Rico, from that perspective, yes, absolutely, no. We, we shouldn't be interfering uh, uh, like that. Hey, Miss J, I didn't know you were here. Welcome, darling. So it's like there was what you. I think you all know that I'm, I'm a fan of history, right? I am a an exuberant hobbyist of history, particularly certain types of history. The Roman, ancient Roman history, is one of them, and I'm not claiming that everything in Roman times was sunshine and rosy, because it wasn't. There was a there was a lot of harshness and. Evil. Um, of course, there was. There always is somewhere in the world, some point in time, there always is. But I'm fascinated by it, and I feel like I should be allowed to take a, a culture, those people, and put that in a fantasy setting, warts and all, because I think that's is a it's more believable, warts and all. But um. It almost gives you something as a player to rail against. It gives you something to fight against. It gives you the bad guys, right? It gives you the, the evil empire. I don't know. It's like... I, I don't want my world to be sanitized because the real world isn't. never has been. Even our gods and goddesses, right? I mean... Look, look at the ancient mythologies and stuff. That was not all sunshine and roses. Where I was going with that story, by the way, is I, I had cause to run in with someone once. And I think she was a writer or something. But she hated the Roman Empire and everything they stood for because they had gladiatorial contests. And that was it. And I feel that that is applying 21st century thinking, 21st century Western civilization and culture to a people 2,000 years ago in a very, very different world. And I'm not saying that I advocate for gladiatorial contests, like, at all. But I'm not going to blame the ancient Romans because they had them. That was at a completely different time. That was a completely different people. It was a completely different bloody world. And I think if you can't recognise that, there, there's a... I think you're missing the point. 
you know, of history in general. And honestly, cultural changes, cultural growth. You see shadows? Hey, shadows, Phantom Jen's here. I wear the shirt. Can you see? I wear the shirt. Hey, Ryan Noir, good to see you, my friend. We're drawing a town, by the way. Everyone that's just here, we're drawing a town. The Shadows Code does nothing other than to play that little ditty. The thing is, so here's the deal. Um, back in Teagle last year, when I was drawing the 12 foot by 12 foot map for Frog God Games... Every time Jennifer, or I should say Phantom Jen, joined the stream, every time I happen to be talking about shadows. So I'm going to add shadows to the furniture. I'm going to add shadows to the wall. And it became this thing where she, when she joined in the chat, she'd be shadows. And she bought me this shirt because of it. Shadow. So like, every time that she came in, I would go shadows. So it's a thing now. It's part of the channel. So we added that little tiny shadow thing, just in honor of Phantom Jet. And yeah, uh, Alex Vixen, exactly, exactly. Now, I do want to make sure that this town here has plenty of farmland around it. I don't want to make this, and I'm thinking about all of this, and all of this being farmland. I don't want to make it too heavily forested, too close, but I am going to put some trees and some copses close by, because I want to chop them down when this town expands. I actually want to show the forestry getting pushed away. I forget, by the way, um, the main the main way of getting gold, I believe, is just watching the channel, by the way. Watching time translates to gold, just so you guys and girls know. Um, I forget what other things do it, because I might not be able to actually access it from here. But then playing the mini games can win you or lose you some gold. So fighting the bosses can earn you some gold in the channel. Um, doing a heist can earn you some gold. There's also an arena that's dueling each other can earn you some gold. Uh, but these are these are risky things, right? I mean, one could argue that I have the most viewing time of my own channel. And my gold is not one of the highest. My gold is just a thousand and 225 because I spent too much time doing heist and stuff and I lost it all so ultimately doing that I think also if you are subscribed you get more gold if you follow you get more gold hosting gets you gold these activities actually can earn you gold as well and then Pex the magnificent Pex who's in the channel with us he's going to be giving you a damn good reason to use that channel gold here soon trademark um yes we will we will be adding features functions what are they called little the emotes and stuff and other ways of using the channel currency you see princess streger now princess streger actually um changed her account name at one point and because she was way up there she was almost like senatorial rank and then she started again and she's back up to ten thousand again now that shows someone has been in the channel for a while but it also shows someone who plays a lot of the games in the channel 
and has more luck with them than I do. I, I stopped playing when I lost like 10,000 freaking gold or something ridiculous doing heists. Okay, we'll finish this little hill here. Come on, there we go. Then, then what are we going to do? I'm going to erase our trace layer from behind. I think we're going to do that. I am going to get rid of you at the top of the hill here. And you. So that's where all little Martin Bailey's can be positioned. And then, then I think what I'm going to do is we're going to bring our town up in its opacity. And we're going to start cleaning up the town a little bit, getting some of our details. This particular map, I think, is actually going to be real quick. This is going to be a fast one. And that's what I hope for. I, want, I, I don't want to get into 60-hour draws on our bigger settlements, okay? Th these things have got to be six hours, eight hours. Uh, someone's looking after me. It's War Game Recon. Actually, Pex, put it down as something for us to talk about. Um, I want to show you guys and girls something. Um, so, mini games. These are the mini games that we could do in the channel right now. We could do others. There's Heist, there's Jewel, there's Arena. This one doesn't tend to get used too much. And there's Boss. The bosses... We can actually make bosses. The trouble is, there's no documentation for this. So, the amount of loot you win if you beat the boss. We've got the health for the boss, their attack value, their dodge and their defense. Because I don't know the formula behind these stats... Like, you know, the other day, Princess Strecker was saying that Caesar's too strong. But his stats aren't that massively different. Is it because he's got a 50 attack? I mean, his health is actually lower than Caligula. It's lower than Nero. It's lower than Vercingetorix. So, uh, and look, his dodge is way less than Vercingetorix. So what makes Caesar so powerful? I don't know. I kind of want to figure out the stats, how they're used. Because then we can sit here one day. We're going to have a little working session. We can add a dozen bosses to this, and we can get we can get quite fantasy like. We can start adding fantasy bosses, and we can start adding gods and things in here. We can have fun, some fun with that. We could do it together on the chat, you know. Actually. Adding you guys and girls could be a thing we do. Like for becoming a subscriber on either the um, Patreon or here, we could add you. We could add you as a boss. That would be actually kind of cool. Who did he defeat? You got Caesar, you see? You defeated Caesar, look at that. We were just talking about him. Good job. And Princess Strega, you could absolutely uh, botch, uh, battle yourself. Exactly. I think, actually, that would be a great little sort of thing to be able to add to the channel. To have channel subscriber bosses. Everyone enters the arena. You are fighting Princess Strega. Hey, Dungeon Tomb is here. Welcome, Dungeon. It's very, very early in the morning for Dungeon, by the way. He's over in Europe. It's got to be something like 4 o'clock in the morning for him, if not 3 o'clock. So, Dungeon, just I'll give you a quick walkthrough. We've got our Thorpe. We've got our Hamlet. I know you watch the YouTube videos, but just to catch you up. We've got the Village. We got our final block. Here it is, my friend. I don't know if you've seen it. Print size, by the way, is about this. But we got our block finished. I think it looks beautiful. I really do. Very happy with how it turned out. 
And we're currently working on our town. Four o'clock, almost four o'clock. So you're you're about was that so you're about literally I can't do the math in my head, but basically you're three hours behind me, but also twelve hours ahead. So what are you, like nine hours ahead of me? Yeah, you're about nine hours ahead. I hope you've been well, my friend. I hope you've been well. We'll be doing some weekend streams and such here shortly, by the way. We'll be getting back into some of those. Some, just so let everyone know, we will be doing some Patreon and Twitch subscriber-only streams. So, if you are subscribed to me, I want you to feel valued. So, there will be more streaming for you, okay? We'll do them on weekends or whatever. I, I forget the exact schedule. Pex, Pex has got it. He keeps me honest. Pex does. And we'll be we'll we'll be working on all sorts of different things, including um, including old school blue maps. Actually, what do you guys and girls think of the old school blue map? What what is your opinion on that? I'm asking for a reason. Like, do you hate them? Do you like them? Are you a bit of a fan? I personally like them, but I'm nostalgic. I think we're ready to actually do a little bit of clean up here, so... While you guys and girls are answering that, I am gonna... Get rid of all of this. I'm actually gonna make my eraser larger. Hey, Noble Dwarf is here! Noble! We were talking about your map earlier, my friend. I had cause to bring Light Harbor up. <laughs> Miss J, I didn't know that. Is that a thing, is it? I never knew that. Miss J says that they were that color to prevent them being photocopied. I did not know that. Look how this is already coming alive. Look at that. That is beginning to take shape. Oh, oh the fact that you... Hold on. You were watching a carry-on movie? Which carry-on movie? I love the Carry On movies. There, there is a timeless humor. Probably wouldn't cut it nowadays. A little bit too raunchy. I love Carry Ons. In fact, I believe I own all of the Carry On movies. Carry On Teacher. Oh, that's fantastic. See, you just earned even more cool points in my books. That is that is awesome. There's not that many Americans that have even heard of the Carry On movies. Alright, I th I think, let's not do that in the wrong layer, I think we have our hills pretty much done. I think that's pretty solid. Actually, Alex Vixen, so yes, you would know about the Carry On films after re-watching some of them. Like, I rewatched uh, Up the Kyber um, only about two weeks ago. And it dawned on me that nowadays there would be a lot of butt hurt. A lot. Yeah, ju they just would not fly. They would not exist in this modern world. Uh, 
Miss Jay, I really seriously never knew that. That's fascinating. And so you could actually draft in the blue, draw the ink, but the blue wouldn't copy. So good to go. Wow, I never knew that. <laughs> oh, and we're wasting the wrong thing. Let's not do that. Let's do this. There it is. There it is. Okay, so let's take this. Let's bring up our opacity on there. Actually, let's let's try taking that opacity down just a smidge. You know, I'm okay with this. I'm going to actually I'm going to merge these two together. I'm going to make this town yeah all Oh, that's why all of the gridded books for math and graphs are in blue. Get the hell out! How could I have so many graph books and everything in my life and not know that? And you know the stupid thing is? I have drawn maps on gridded paper like that. Wanted to photocopy the map and done so. Blue doesn't turn up and I've been disappointed because I actually wanted it to turn up. I never knew that was a thing. Okay, okay, okay. That's cool. That is cool. <laughs> so you even got the Magnificent Pex's mind blown. And that's not easy to do. Well, I'm sorry, younger me, but we are redrawing some of this here. No, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. You tried to get me. You tried to get me. But I, I'm good. I didn't jump out my skin. So we've been going for an hour and 20. We're probably gonna go for 10 more minutes, okay? I feel like this is a good stopping point, but we'll go for 10 more minutes. We're having fun here. I'm gonna, I wanna draw something here and I wanna draw something here. You know, okay, so a computer game with the, the codes in uh, non-photograph, uh, ph photocopying in blue, that would make sense. Say, 
I loved when computer games came with manuals, but I also used to love getting a computer game in a box and taking you take the discs out and you take like the manual out and the manuals had actual proper instructions for how to play. And some of them were actually pretty thick. They were good days. I started to be disappointed when the, I, I feel like the manuals stopped before the boxes did. All right, I'm in safe. I used to be into a lot of the um, strategy games and the likes, you know. So for me, the manuals were kind of a staple, how you're playing this game, and it's not a straightforward game. So when they really started throttling back on those, it, it hit hard, you know. They, they started to include the manuals on the discs themselves, didn't they, as part of the game. And it, it just took something away. Having, having that little printed manual was... It's just so freaking awesome. Hey, Cake Geeks here. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. In fact, Cake, did you see the end results of this? This is kind of where we netted out, my friend. This is a little bit more zoomed in than the final print size. Any more than that, you just start seeing the warts and all. But print, I think, looks great. Even zoomed in a little bit. I love it. I think coloured. I think coloured is going to look really, really good. I'm very hopeful. You only call it people by their initials because you can literally do A B M M G L, and yours is like C G A. Suga. So anyway, we're drawing a town. We're drawing a town, and we're actually going to start getting into. Um... Actually, so tomorrow night we're going to do the fields and farms for this town. I think this particular map will be pretty, pretty, pretty quick to do. It's Cave's birthday tomorrow? Cave, say it ain't so. Happy birthday, my friend. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you. You're a fine, fine human being. For a barbarian scum, you're a fine human being.
You printed some goodies for me? Are they like little tentacly things called Cthulhu y things? Alright, see you, Cave Geek. You, you joined right at the right time because I'm ending my stream myself. Maybe I'll even drag these in greats over to your stream. Who knows? up with your what 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 is your current go-to set of uh war game rules that is a big question oh actually before i do this this might actually be a really good time to end the stream here shortly you see this blue line at the top you see that that is a photoshop bug that they actually fixed a while ago and when i pinch zoom and rotate it's mainly in the pinch zoom it like completely gets stuck and i i no longer have any touch control the main thing though is um it starts to really screw up with a lot of the other touch inputs and i can't get rid of that now without completely shutting down photoshop so uh, that might be an appropriate time to be zooming out of this and um kind of calling it for the evening but i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna answer War game Recon's question, and then we're kind of going to do the wrap here, okay? Right about an hour and a half mark. And I will save it first. Alright, so, War game and Recon, to answer your question, there is no simple set or simple answer to that. Um, so I'm going to answer it in a couple of different ways. First and foremost, it really depends on the area that you're playing, right? Um... Am I playing a Napoleonic war game? Am I playing an Ancients war game? Am I doing a modern naval war game? Or am I doing like a dogfighting game? And if I am, what era? So the rule set that I'm even going to consider, honestly, is going to immediately get subdivided by what era am I in and even what subject matter. Because like Napoleonic era land versus napoleonic era naval very different rule sets but if i am gonna broad brush stroke this response it will be i actually kind of like the um warlord set of rules and uh, i own a lot of different rules okay i own a lot of different rules some very crunchy um and i don't mind crunch i quite like crunch but the Warlord rules, i.e. your Black Powders, your Hail Caesars, you can get a good sized war game done in a four hour period. And the rules are quick to learn, quick to pick up, intuitive and pretty fast moving. You can house rule some things to make them a little bit more crunchy if you want to. There are some optional rules to make them a little bit more crunchy if you like. But they've been very successful for me um, and a lot of the games that I've been running. 
I did a variant of DBA for my um, Tudor Bird game. That Tudor Bird game had something like 3,000 miniatures on the table, by the way. It was a big 16 foot game. I did uh, uh, DBE, which is like, you know, DB Extravialis or something crazy like that, which was a variant. And then I simplified it a little bit more. So it was fast, fast, fast moving. Volume D6, that's how many count commands you've got. It's a simple ruler in color segments. Like, that's your movement stick right there. And it was fast. I could literally put 12 people around the table, move 3,000 miniatures, and get an entire game done in four hours. So it really does depend on my audience. Am I at a convention? How big is the game? What is the era? But ultimately, end of the day, Warlord rules tend to drift to the top for me. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with DBE. I'll, 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 it was like a variant of DBA. A DBA in and of itself isn't a bad set of rules. It, it, they're not my go-to. But as a simplified version for a con game... There was, also, there was also a set of rules I used for my Watling Street. And my Watling Street had 15mm miniatures and thousands of them on the table. Thousands of them. Ah. Uh. For Valor or something like that, or uh, Jack might remember it, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna remember. It. But I, I will dig that up too. It was something like for Valor, but I feel like it had three words in the title. But they, they were fast; they were fast moving, um, and it was a, a card-based system. So like all of the players would draw like a card and you, you'd only have like X amount of circulation and you would have a copy of the card in your hand and you draw it out and you go, okay, red four, you're moving, all right? Black two, you're moving. And so it, 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 the downside was you'd do one player at a time, but if you only had about four to six players around it, you kept things moving, moving, moving. It was a fast set of rules. Watling Street, big game. Everyone had an absolute blast. It was good fun. So, yeah, uh, let's talk rules anytime, anytime. We'd actually love to get your podcast just talk rules. It'd be fantastic. All right, so with this said, I do have a Photoshop bug I have not seen in a long time. That blue and white strip at the top, that means I've got to restart Photoshop. So this is a great point to end this. Before I do, let's just do a quick recap here. We have, we have finished the Brock. The Brock looks great. And we have started working on our first full-on town map. This is going to be mainly uh, farms and such around it. And I think that's okay. And there's purposefully no wall. But you'll notice they're up on a hill. So they've still got a little bit of defensive factor going on. We are going to put some buildings down off the slopes. Particularly where we used to have a village over there. And we are going to actually add a little Martin Bailey over here. Then it is, this is going to be all farms. So tomorrow night... Oh, no, wait. Tomorrow night, I'm actually in a role-playing game unless things change, okay? I'm going to be streaming it. It's We are all girl guides and boy scouts. And it. I got a funny feeling it's going to be like the little Scooby-Doo type of thing. I'm a player in it. And it's going to be using the 5E system, kind of, sort of. And Jim Kitchen is GMing it. So tomorrow night, from 5 o'clock Pacific, probably through to about 9 o'clock Pacific, we're going to be playing a game. Feel free to join by and, like, contribute, okay? Because I'm going to be sitting here as a player going, what the hell is going on? My cat is probably going to be scared. So feel free to join for that. The next time we come into this map... We are going to be drawing lots and lots and lots of farms. That's the main thing that we're going to be doing here. And then that map is done and we're going to move on. And we're probably going to move on. Maybe to the Mott and Bailey. We might hit up the Mott and Bailey, you know, kind of like bounce up and down the page a little bit. We might hit up the Martin Bailey. We're going to do the Martin Bailey from an elevated perspective. Like a little bit like this sketch here. Something like this. Shouldn't take too long. Should be fairly simple. And then I think we'll hit up the fortified town. Something like that. If you think about it. 
we actually don't have that much more to do. I know there's some clean up on these to do. Well, actually, that's the city with fortifications. This is just a city, I think. But um, we're just going to keep plugging away at this. We're making good progress. There's going to be a lot of black ink on this white paper here real shortly. And we're going to start coloring if I don't cave in and start coloring sooner. So with that said, all of you, I love you. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. For my Twitch subscribers, you rock. Thank you. For my Patreon supporters, much love. Because we've got Pex and Magnificent with us. The gifts from us to you are going to just start to flow. And it doesn't matter if you're subscribed on Twitch or Patreon. You're both going to get to benefit, okay? See you on the Discord channel, okay? It doesn't matter what else is going on in the world. No matter if I'm streaming or not, I'm on Discord. Come and hang out over there. Just say hi. And I'll say hi back. Love you all. I'll see you tomorrow, right? We're going to be playing a role-playing game. Let's see how that one goes. Everyone have a great evening. I'll see you on the flip side.